telling you, family, sometimes you gotta, you have to learn how to worship yourself through whatever the enemy loves to whisper to you. You have to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord as he as he grew stronger. Come on, somebody, as he as he grew wiser because he he encouraged himself in the Lord. And is there anything that the enemy cannot take from you today? Is your worship? He may try to test them things around you this week. He may try to play with your mind this week. But there's one thing that he can't do that he used to do that he's mad at you that because you are a worshiper that he can't worship God anymore. That he was kicked out of, out of, out of, out of heaven and he can't worship God anymore. The one thing that you have today, oh my gosh, the one thing that you have today that the enemy that don't have is your worship. So you get you better worship him. The enemy can't do what you can do today. So this is why we stretch our hands. This is why we praise our Lord. Because this is the one thing that you can't touch. You might try to touch my finances. You might try to touch my money. You might try to touch me on my job. But you can't touch my worship. You can't touch my worship. So this hallelujah belongs to you, God. This hallelujah belongs to you. This ground you stand on is holy. It belongs to you. Wherever you go is holy. Wherever you show up is holy. So show up in here, God. Show up in my family. Show up on my job. Show up in my car. Come on, somebody. Wherever you go, God, is holy. Wherever you go, the enemy can't go. So I want to go with you today, God. I want to walk with you today, God. I want to go to higher ground with you today, God. Take us to higher places. Let us dream some things we never dreamed before. Take us a place that we've never been, and that's only a place that worship can take you. Take us there today, Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh. Do you feel his presence? If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Exodus 3. Whew. Verses 1 through 15. God is speaking to you right now, family. God is speaking to you right now, family. To our online family, God is speaking to you right now. Verse 1, family, reads this. Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. The priest of Midian, he he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Just a regular day. Come on, somebody. Just a, just a regular day on the job site. Just an ordinary day. God is getting ready to show up in his life. You can be having a, just a regular week. You can just be having a regular day on your nine to five, on your entrepreneur, and here your life is getting changed because God is getting ready to show up in your life in an unexpected way. God is getting ready to, to show up and speak. And I love it that when God shows up, your life can't stay the same. When God shows up, wherever God is getting ready to take you, He's determined to get your attention. That Moses here on a, a regular nine to five in verse two says this, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire within a bush as, as Moses looked, he, he saw that the bush was on fire, but was not consumed. So, so, so Moses thought, I must go over. Any, is there any curiosity people in here? Come on. If, so Moses thought, if I just be a little bit nosy, come on. Yeah, yeah, if I could just be a little bit nosy. You need to get some holy curiosity in your life right now. You need to get nosy about what the things God is getting ready to do in your life. That when God begins to move, you need to be stop picking, pointing your nose over. Holy Spirit, what are you doing over there? 
You can be driving down the street, a bumper sticker speak to you. Come on, somebody. Because you're nosy. God is speaking to you. So Moses thought, I, I must go over there. I'll go over and look at this remarkable sight. Why isn't the bush burning up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. I just, God just shared this with me. I, I love that he didn't call Moses one time. I, I, I appreciate it that, that, that God, when he calls you, that he just doesn't call you one time. That he's a God that his love never fails. That he keeps calling you. He keeps calling you. Is there, is there anybody with me today? Don't, don't leave me out here by myself this morning because I, I know I was in a season where, where God called and I didn't obey. Woo. And God called and I didn't listen. And, and God called and I said, that's not the voice of God. And, and God called and, and I walked in a different direction. But I thank God that when he calls, he repeats what he said because he's so determined to love you despite where you may be at right now. Your God will continue to call on you until you get it. Your God will continue to call on you until you give him his yes. Moses, Moses, Moses. Come on, come on. Brenda, come on. Brenda, he keeps calling you, baby, because he knows what he put inside of you. And he doesn't want it to fail. So, so even how your life may look like right now, I thank God that he's still calling you. The pain you may be feeling on today, I thank God despite your disobedience, despite feeling rejected, despite feeling fear, despite feeling doubt, not enough faith to push through and trust that God wants to do through you. Despite that, he still loves you and he's still calling you. Moses, Moses. And he answered, here I am. Here I am to worship you. Here I am. Here I am to worship you. If you jump down to verse 10, jump down to verse 10, key for me. In verse 10, it says, therefore go, somebody say go. I am sending you, sending you. Yes, you. You need, you need, you need to point, to point, point to yourself right now and say you. You, yes, yes, you, come on. Point to your neighbor and say you, God, God is calling you, yes, yes, yes. You with that story, yes, yes, you, come on, you with, with that mistake, God, God is calling you, yes, yes, you can look at your broken pieces and I thank God that he's still calling you. Moses, murder someone, Moses, has some limitation, Moses, was on a, was a future to Moses. Come on, somebody. On, 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 on a regular day, this is Moses on a regular day because he, he ran from God and he ran from where he was at and he was all by himself just working a regular day and God shows up in his life and you can read this story or you can even see it in a movie and I'm telling you right now, I believe when, when God showed up, Moses thought that God was showing up to defeat him. My past caught up with me. My pain caught up with me. God is mad at me, disappointed in me. And God didn't speak of his thought. God spoke to where he's taking him. You're so concentrated. You're so concentrated on your limitations and you're so concentrated on your mistakes and you're so concentrated on that pain and God just wants to speak about your destiny. 
that you want to have a conversation and God is saying, I'm not having a conversation because I removed that as far as the east and from the west and, and I forgot about it. And matter of fact, can we go to the New Testament? My son died for that. So why are you still tripping about it? Because I'm getting ready to send you. I'm sending you somewhere. To go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people to Israel, the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israel out of Egypt? The voice that Moses was hearing was phenomenal at this time, the voice of God. And when I was studying this week, family, you have the voice of God, but then you also have the other voice inside that says, I can't do it. What if I'm not enough? But, but, but God, his voice is saying this, it's the battle of the inside voice. It's like a, it's a, a battle of the voices. Sounds like one of those TV shows on Fox, NBC. The battle of the voices. God's voice says, I am the great I am. Moses' voice says, but who am I? God's voice says, I'll be with you. But Moses' voice says, but what if? But, but God's voice says, I, I call you. It's, it's the battle of the inside voice. I don't know what voices you've been hearing this week. I don't know what voices that's been in your head this week. But God's voice is speaking to you right now. If you're taking notes, I want to preach from this subject for our, our, our remaining time today. If you're taking notes, just, just write, write this down, the battle of the inside voice. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you. We thank you that your voice is speaking right now, Holy Spirit. Let your voice fill this temple even right now. Let it remove our any distracted voices, any whispers from the enemy. Let our minds not, not shift or, or get distracted by, by another voice, but let us lean into your voice even right now. Whether they're in person or, or whether they find themselves online, let, let your voice increase and the other voice decrease. Open up our ears to hear, just says the Lord, we love you with all our heart. We praise you for everything that we have. It is in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen, amen, amen. Family, you can go ahead and have your seats. Come on, I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss C students as well. How you feel, family? You feeling good? You feeling good? Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to just take the next few minutes. I want to, we're kicking off a brand new series, family, called Strange Fire. Strange Fire. Somebody say, Strange Fire. Come on, are you woke? Strange Fire. Hey, you're standing too long. You mad at me now, family? Come on. Strange <laughs> Fire. There we go. Appreciate it, Melody. Come on. Y'all know you got my back. We, 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 we get this phrase, strange fire found in Leviticus 10. And see, what I love about strange fire is when, is when Aaron and his sons were in the tabernacle and they, they used a, a common fire where God's fire supposed to be. See, I wrote in my notes, we, we, we can never replace God's fire, or can I say it this way, God's presence with a common thing. 
They, 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 were supposed, they were supposed to offer up a offering to God from an altar of fire that God put, put, put down, but they decided to not use God's fire, but use a, another fire. And, and I, we can all have 2020 vision when it comes to hindsight. Come on, somebody. That we can, we can ask the question right here, why would they do this? Why would they go in another direction? God has already given them the direction on how they are supposed to offer up a sacrifice. Could it be, could it be an inside voice that told them to go in a different direction? Could it, could it be that something else persuaded them to actually use something common instead of using the very thing that's holy? And let me break that down real quick, family. Be very careful of choosing something common and not actually choosing the presence of God to do the thing that he has called you to do. To God has called you to do some things. You can never substitute the presence of God to the very thing that he has called you to do. That the fire that God is putting inside of you can only come from him. You can't get distracted by other fires. Somebody say other fires. See, I wonder, family, I wonder, I wonder what voice told him. It was probably uh, an inside voice that, that told him. And I, as I was studying this week, I, and I'm praying for you, but I just wonder what your inside voice sounds like. I, I, I just wonder what your inside voice sounded like this week. If I can be honest, family, my, my inside voice would have scared you this week, and it's not even Halloween. Come on, somebody. My, my inside voice, sometimes, family, if I could just be transparent and I could just show some scars real quick, sometimes my inside voice is not rated G for godly. Come on, don't leave me out here by myself, Melody. You had my back five minutes ago, Melody. Come on. Sometimes my inside voice can be rated R for, for red because I, I need the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. You got a red R inside voice. Don't, don't echo holy in here right now. Come on. We all have, we all have sin and fallen short of the glory. And sometimes these, these sometimes we're, we're battling God's voice and we're, we're battling another voice. And, and we're, we can be so consumed with other voices in my life. You know what? I caught this revelation this week, Brenda, and, and our son Princeton in his room. Princeton does not have an inside voice doesn't know what it is. He's never discovered an a inside voice. And I, I remember going over to his room. So many voices in the room. Princeton voice. You would have thought a whole community of kids just came in my house and I had no idea there's so many voices. Princeton voice and Spider-Man voice and Black Panther voice and back to Princeton voice. It sounded like 20 kids, but it was just him. A whole lot of voices and I'm sitting there trying to get his attention and he has no idea. I've been watching him for 10 minutes. He's playing. He's going crazy. Voices everywhere. I I could not get his attention because he was consumed with so many voices. I just wonder sometimes how long God's been trying to get your attention this week, but you're just been so consumed with so many voices, voices of frustration, voices of opinions, Voices of what's on the news and what's going on. Voices of disappointment. We all have all of these voices coming at us. And here's what I'm learning more. The enemy will love to amp up the voices in your life to try to wash out the voice of God in your life. And if we don't get in a position with God, we can easily be like Aaron's sons. Now we're offering up strange fire. And I'm just saying, God is trying to get your attention for a reason. Because he's sending you somewhere. God is trying to get your attention for a reason. Because he's trying to pr protect you. God is trying to get your attention. And just like Princeton in that room, his father was watching him trying to get his attention. But he had no idea about it.
What, what does, that's a question. I'm going to give you some homework this week, family. I'm, I'm going to give you the home. I'm like the teacher. I, I tell you about the homework. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you later that you're going to have some homework to do because what does your inside voice look like? I just don't want to preach it to you. I want you to dive into it. I want you to dissect it. That's, that's how much we love you because I understand the enemy will love to whisper inside voices to you. That the enemy will love to whisper to you. And, and I'm just telling your family because we could be consumed with so many of insecurity voices and doubt and, and maybe it's grief. But I'm just as we read that God loves you and God is calling you. And I want you to be reminded of Romans 3, 23. That, that it says it this way. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified. Somebody say justified. Freely by his grace. Somebody say his grace. Not your works, but his grace. Come on, God is still calling you through his grace. Come on. So when the other voices try to whisper into your ears this week, you got to tell the enemy, I know what you're whispering to me, but I'm still saved by his grace. So I know I may be going through some things right now, but guess what, enemy? I'm still saved by through his grace, not by my works, not by my effort, not by who I know, not by how much money is in my pocket, not by my calling. I'm just saved by his grace. You got to remind yourself on that on a Wednesday. You got to remind yourself that on a Monday because the enemy is determined to steal, kill, and destroy everything in your life. But you got to encourage yourself. You want to know how you encourage yourself? You tell the enemy by his grace. By his grace. By his grace, I will get there. By his grace, we will get there. By his grace and his timing, it will come to pass. But by his grace, my marriage is healthy. Come on, somebody. By his grace, my kids is going to have a wonderful life. By, by, by his grace, I'm going to get that job. I'm speaking to somebody right now. By his grace, you just need to open up your hands right now and begin to stretch to, ha stretch to heaven and say, by his grace and your timing, let your will be done in my life, God. Here I am to worship. By his grace. By his grace, through his grace. See, family, one of the, one of the most questions I get even as, as asked as a pastor is, how do I know I'm hearing from God? That's one of the most questions I get in just counseling and, and walking with people is that we, we can struggle with hearing from God. See, I talk about the battle of the inside voice. God is speaking to you. If you are saved through, through grace, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is always speaking to you. This is the battle of the inside voice, but we understand because everyone in here and online has a flesh nature. And our flesh loves to speak. Our flesh loves to talk. Our flesh loves to rise up. Come on, somebody. And God is speaking and your flesh is speaking. See, see, hearing from God is, is very fundamental. And what I mean by that is that, yes, you can practice hearing, get it, hearing from God and getting better from hearing from God. It is very practical with it. But, but what, I, what I do want to say, I do want to say this and I do want to share this. Because here... Hearing from God is all about understanding his character, his nature of who he is. God would never contradict himself. God would never go against his word. God will always stand. It's, it's through God is, God is love, so he will always speak to you what? Through love. The God is joy. He will always speak to you through, through joy. So when that, when that inside voice starts speaking and you're trying to question, is this from God or not? Hear me today, my friend. Hear me today, my brother. If it contradicts his word, that is not God. God is love. God is peace. God is gentle. He, he speaks to you gentle. See, see, the world loves to roar, but God loves to whisper. He 
whispers because he's close to you. He, he whispers because he's not at a distance. Why would somebody need a yell if I'm standing right beside you? So all you have to do is just lean in with God. All you have to do is just get in position with God. Just, it's, not, it's not what you've been through or what's on your plate or what mistakes you have. You are not distant from God because God loves you and God saved you through grace. So he's whispering to you. And I'm just saying, just like we found with the fruit of the Spirit, God is love, joy, peace. God speaks through patience with you. And God is, he, he's speaking, he, he's calling you over and over. He's drawing close to the brokenhearted. He's still speaking through you, through self-control and gentleness. He's speaking to you. God is whispering to you right now. And, and here's why we must identify the right voice. Hear this, family. I wrote this in my notes. Hear this online. Because our inside voice will begin to shape our perspective in things in life. So whatever inside voice you are leaning in on this week, it will begin to shape your opinions in life. It, it will begin to shape your viewpoints in life. If we are not led by the right voice, if we're not led by the right spirit, we will begin to follow another voice. And we know the word Jesus said, another voice you will not follow. But if you're following after the voice of Jesus, Jesus will always lead you into the right place. He will never lead you away from his word. He will never lead you away from his promises. He will always lead you in the right way. So I ask the question, I ask the question. If you're taking notes, please write it down. Please write it down. And I want you to do some, some investigation this week. Which inside voice is leading you this week? Which inside voice is leading you this week? I, I'm going to give you three points real quick as for homework. I did, didn't I tell you I'm going to give you homework? Didn't I tell you that? We good? We good? All right, here we go. Here we go. Number one, <clears throat> does my inside voice lead me to the right place? Does my inside voice lead me to the right place? Psalms 119, 105 says it this way, family. Your word is a lamp for my feet. And, and a light, somebody say light, a light on my path. When God speaks, his voice leads to intentional time with him. God will always lead you beside still waters. God will always lead you. His voice will never lead you away from his presence. So when you're battling this week, come on, somebody. Because you're going through some stuff this week, that voice that's whispering to you, if it's not leading you to get closer to him, that's not God. If it's not leading you to spend more time in his presence, that's not God. God's voice will always lead you beside some still waters. And here's what some still waters is. Still waters is devotion time with God. Still waters is showing up on a Sunday in person or, or, or online. That's, that's God's voice that I got to be determined. God is pulling you in here so you can get with him because God wants to share something with you, my friend. His voice is always, always leading. And come on, still waters, that's community. Your friends, this is why we got to make sure we got the right circle. This is why we got to make sure. I, I love that message that Pastor Brenda preached a few weeks ago. What, what's the spiders in your life? Come on, somebody. I got if God's voice will always show me who my spiders is. About to re-preach your message, babe. Because God's voice will always lead you to still waters. Come on, groups just launch. Uh, come on, can we shout out some groups? Come on. <laughs> Hopefully you join a group. D.C. can be the most isolated place in this whole country. Loneliness, rampant. And, and here's what the enemy would love to do, to kill, whisper to you in isolation. And this is why you have to be intentional with finding healthy community. You have to be intentional we're finding the right people. You have to be intentional. There's a desire to get closer. There's a desire to get better. You have to be intentional with making sure I get the still waters because beside those still waters is the very fuel that I need to run my race. 
Beside those still waters is the very thing that I need. I, I love it. You look right over here. We have our care team, man. And for online, we have our, our online link for our care team, man. And here's what the care team is. The care team has partners that come alongside of you to pray with you, to love you, to walk, on, to walk with you. We have some partners. Come on, when Jesus sent them out two by two, what did Jesus do? He partnered them up. And all I'm saying is last week we talked about praying, solo with prayers, and maybe God is calling you into a season where you got to learn how to link up with some people, where you got to learn how to partner up with some people so that you can go do the very thing that he has called you to do. You walk in this road by yourself. You walk in this road praying by yourself. And here's what this community, hear my heart today. Our desire is that you will never walk another step by yourself. If that's the vision of this house, that you will never walk another step by yourself. There's some partners in the building. There's some partners on online. There's some people that wants to come alongside of you and link up with you and confirm the calling that's in your life and point you into the direction of where God is calling you to do the mission of the Great Commission to release his good news all over this world. Come on, somebody. Is anybody in here with me? That God is calling you to partner and walk. Number two, number two, does my inside voice lead me to the confirmations in life. 1 Corinthians 14, it says this, family, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Here, here's what I mean by this. God gives you signs so that you can be in awe of him. When you're walking in God's purpose, God will always show you the signs that he's talking to you. That you can be in a conversation with people and you can catch the signs. That, that I said God loves to repeat. He, he will repeat it to you, not just to you directly, but he'll give it to other people so you can catch it from other people. You'll be watching a movie. Come on, is anybody like that? You'll be watching a movie, and this movie, it, 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 God will start speaking right there. I tell you, you're driving in your car and, and worship music, and God will start, God will give you signs of confirmation. What are the confirmations in your life right now? That, that's the question when you know God is speaking. God, show me the confirmations. Should I take this job or not? Show me the confirmation. Maybe you got a big decision to make in this season. And, and here's what I'm saying. The voice will lead you to the confirmations. That God will always show you that you don't have to make that decision by yourself. That God is showing that you don't have to go on that ledge and just, and just hope that you're making a, the right decision. Just, just hope. I, I just hope that it happens, God. No, God will show you the rhythms and the patterns and the images and the confirmations that you're walking in the right direction. Why? Because his voice leaves you beside still waters. His voice will never lead you away from the confirmations. His voice will always lead you because he loves you and his love cannot fail. So he brings confirmation. He brings signs in your life that you're making the right decision. And God is saying in this season, just like he told Moses, he gave him a sign and then he said, go. It's time to go because you caught the confirmation. It's time to be obedient. And for my last point, I'm going to invite the team back up as we get ready to go back into worship. My last point is this, family. Does my inside voice lead me to glorify his name? John 12, John 12, 32 says this, family. He said, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Hear this, family. Your voice serves you. God's voice serves him. Here's what I mean by that. Let me teach it. Your voice will always glorify yourself. Your plans by without God will always glorify yourself. Your plans, if it's just surrounded by you and it's just your voice, will always glorify yourself. 
But when God speaks, it never glorifies you, glorifies him. This is how you know that God is speaking to you in this season. The decision that you're getting ready to make, is it just about you? The, the, the questions that you have in life right now and that, that, that voice that's speaking to you, is it glorified you? Is it, is it just going to make you better? Is it, is it just going to make your family better? Or does it bring glory to God's name? When God speaks, it always brings glory to his name. It never contradicts his word. It, his voice never contradicts his promises. His, his voice will always glorify his name and it draws all people to him. So the reason why I'm sharing this, and here's your test this week, is when that, when that other voice is speaking in your head, we rebuke all other voices this week. We, we, we come against all other voices that's been speaking to you. And we plead the blood of Jesus over your life and we ask that God, God voice will begin to amplify that, that God voice that you will hear it at a higher level than you have ever heard it before because his voice is leading you to still waters. We silence the other voice this week. We come against it and we ask that God speak fresh over your life because he loves you and he's calling you and he's leading you beside still waters. Amen. Just stand to our feet as we get ready to close out. What inside voice is leading you in this season, family? What inside voices is leading you as we get ready to pray out and go back into worship. The Bible says this, family, that God promises a yes and amen. And here's what the reality and here's what God whispered to me this week. And I want to share with you. He said, Anthony, you've been saying amen to a lot of things. But are you saying amen to my voice, to my promises? But are you saying amen to the insecurities? Are you saying amen to that you're not enough? Are you saying amen? Are you, here's amen, it's agreement. You're, you're, you're coming into agreement and here's what God is saying, that his promises are yes and amen and God is saying it's time to start agreeing and saying amen to my voice. That say amen to my voice because his voice is inside of you. His, his voice is speaking right now. Matter of fact, his word says greater is he that is in the world. But, but first, even before he said that, greater is in you. Greater is in you than he that is in the world. So guess what? The greater that we're glorified is right here and he's speaking to you right now. Right in the midst of the pain, he's speaking to you. Right in the midst of, I don't know what my next look like, he's speaking to you. He's greater, and greater will always speak. Say amen. You got to say amen to some things. This we Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you. We thank you for the promises that you're whispering to us even right now. We thank you that, you're, that your voice draws near each and every day of our life. From the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your voice is here with us. Your voice is speaking. And right now, Lord God, as we already prayed earlier, we ask that you silence the other voices 
Teach us how to hear your voice. Teach us how to be guided by your voice. Teach us how to apply your voice to our everyday world, to our everyday needs. Teach us how to walk after your step. Lead us in the path of your righteousness. Lead us by your voice, Lord God. And through your voice, we will get stronger. Through your voice, we will get wiser. Through your voice, we will be overcomer. We thank you and we glorify that your voice never ceases, but your voice is continuing. Release your voice. We honor you. We thank you. It's not like you. Before we close out, we never want to end this moment without doing a salvation call. And as we talked about the voice of the Holy Spirit, that that's not possible without accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The greatest decision that you can ever make is inviting that voice, that spirit into your world and decreeing, declaring over your life that he's Lord and Savior. Maybe you never made that decision for an online family. Maybe you never accepted Jesus Christ or maybe God is calling you back. Moses, Moses. God is saying it's time to rededicate because I've been speaking to you, but you've been, you're been consumed with other voices. If that's you, just all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Just want you to repeat this simple word, but the greatest words you will ever say. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I invite you to live in me, breathe in me all the days of my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Come on, family, can we begin to put our hands together? Come on, can we begin to accept? Come on, for our online family, come on, we, we love you. Amen, amen. I'm so thankful that we have this place to call home. <laughs> I'm so thankful for the community here. I'm so thankful for the word that Pastor Anthony brought forth today. What a mighty word, what a mighty word to feast on. What a mighty word to go back and listen to throughout the week when those voices begin to battle in your head. What a, you know, just go push rewind. <laughs> Go on YouTube, Facebook, and just, you know, push rewind and listen back to the parts that really blessed you. What a mighty word. I'm so thankful for that. Now this is time in the service for our tithes and our offering, the returning of our tithes and the bringing of our offerings unto God. I'm going to ask the ushers to please come forward. Um, and before we go into the offering part, I just wanted to share a nugget with you. Um, God placed on my heart this week. When I was thinking about it, I work in finance. So we always hear about the inflation. Anybody affected in the grocery store? <laughs> so I have three boys and of course my husband and the grocery store has been hitting our pockets. And I was like, God, God, oh my God, like what is going on? I need to cut costs here, budget here. But I remember that the word says, test me at this. And see what I do it, right? So I, in my prayer, I say, okay, God, I'm going to test you at this. Like, I'm, I'm bringing, returning my tithe back to you. And I also want to sow into different ministries. So God, I'm going to test you at this. And see, don't you make up the difference, Lord God. I'm not going to worry about it. I have a kid that's going to be going to college soon. And I'm like, God, I'm going, I'm going to test you at this, at the scholarships. <laughs> and see, won't you do it? I'm I'm going to pray bigger praise like Pastor Anthony has been talking about. Are your prayers big? Do they scare you? I'm praying crazy prayers, guys. I'm praying big prayers. So let's pray over our offering. 
God, I thank you, Lord, for the seed that you've given us, Father. And I thank you for good ground to sow into, Father. I thank you that we are not turning a blind eye to the poor or the widow, Lord, but we are looking for doors to sow into, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for the community, Lord God, here, that we have the opportunity, Lord God, to partner with, Lord God, to partner with shelters and schools, Lord God, to partner with homes in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for every family that we are able to bless and be a blessing to, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for the ability to say yes to things, Lord. I thank you that the tithes and the offerings open opportunities for us to pour out as a community, Father, to sow seeds to moms that may need it, to sow seeds to dads they may need it, Lord God, to sow seeds to children that need it, Lord God, to organizations, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you've called us, called us, Lord God to be partners, Father, with the kingdom, Lord, and to be sowers, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you will receive this offering, Father, and that it may be blessed, Lord God, and that there is anything that anyone needs here, Lord God, I pray that they will say it and test you at it, Lord God, and I pray that you will show up like only you can. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sunday church. How is fun? Happy Sunday church. How y'all feeling? Yeah? Okay. Well, you're the faithful ones. You made it out despite the rain and the clouds. We have gold stars for you. No, we don't. But we have a thank you and a smile. I'm serious. Let's be honest. Sometimes you see that weather and you're like, can I do it? Should I do it? You see, I did it. I'm from Brooklyn. I put on my Tim's. I was ready. I'm not... You brave I'm a DC the girl. girl. Oh, hello. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. So, however you got here, we're, we're so thankful um, to have you here. A um, couple quick announcements. Today is Next Step Sunday, uh, church. So, basically, what that means is if you are now coming to Christ or you are new here at Celebration, this is an opportunity to learn about your next steps what that looks like. So right after church with our pastors, Pastor Brendan, Pastor Anthony, uh, to the left of the sanctuary, as soon as you exit, there's a classroom there. That's where we're going to be able to speak to you about what your next step looks like in life, in Christ, with us as a church and community. And for our family online, the description um, has that link as well. And I love that about the church. Can I yes. say that, that whether you're in person and online, we really make an effort for everyone to be included and have access to that information. Now, Next Step Sunday is the first Sunday of every month. So if you miss this one, there's one next month. But we'd love to see you. You're already here. So please um, come on. And then... Um, Next one, very near and dear to my heart. So um, outside of Tim's, I am um, the outreach director here at this church. Um, partnered with my wonderful husband and groom. I've always wanted to say that. You ever meet those couples, the, the guys I love it, they'll say, oh, my bride. Yeah, that's nice. They say my bride after so many years. Well, I get to say my groom yes. um, over there, G. Kingsley and um Partnership Sunday coming up in a few weeks, October 16th. It's so important because just like your beautiful prayer, um, Pastor Brenda, this is an opportunity for everyone to see what happens locally. Like this is where when we ask you and we say step out with your offerings and your tithes and partner up with us, this is that opportunity for you to meet people, hear real stories yeah. about where your money is going, where yes. your time is going, where your volunteer efforts are going. Yeah. It's not some deep abyss that you will never see. Yeah. You will hear those stories and you will feel, um, I would hope just a little bit closer and have that confirmation that you are in a place that truly is about serving and service. Yes. Like I said, not just here, but globally. So please don't miss that. That is October 16th. We're so excited yes. um, for you to meet all the partners and get to learn a little bit more about what we do here uh, for outreach at the church. And then groups, they're groups, still alive. Groups, Has, who's groups. trying to groups? It's dark. If you are raising your hand, I'm just going to trust <laughs> that. 
that you are, but groups are still live. So if you haven't had a chance yet, please find your people. Um, again, we have conversation groups, yeah. food groups, um, groups in the morning, groups in the evening. Yes. There's not a lunchtime group yet. Not yet. <laughs> not, so, hey, plug. Um, you can put that on your meeting on Teams for those of you who work hybrid, right? Give you a break. Think about it. Um, but yeah, we have Teams. Um, I'm here with Teams work mode i apologize we have groups live and so if you haven't found one yet just as pastor said earlier this is such a great opportunity to find your people find communities so we can do life together and um yeah online family as well you have that opportunity to join us so thank you super excited about groups thank you let's prepare to close out let's pray God, I thank you, Father, for your protection. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, the opportunity to worship you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you protect us in our coming and our going, Lord God. I pray that you protect our homes, Lord God, every household, Father. I pray that there is peace, Lord God, there. I pray, Lord God, that there is peace beyond our understanding, Lord God. I pray for clarity, Lord God, wherever it's needed, Lord God. I pray that your voice, Father, will echo, Lord God, as you continue to call us closer to you, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for who you are, Lord God, and I thank you, Father, that we are yours. I thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace bestowed upon us, Father. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. God bless you, and have an amazing week.